Howdy once again. It's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to the channel. And guess where I just got back from? And boy, it was hot today. And I know, I know, but what could one more little auction hurt when you're 76 years old? But I didn't buy a whole lot, but here is my walnut. Dun 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 dun. Toolbox. It said Gerstner on that rag that I just took off, but I don't believe it's a Gerstner. It is a walnut chest. And it's filled with, you guessed it, a lot of red, a lot of red. And a few other things here, too. Well, this was an estate auction. An older man, even older than me, passed away recently. And they sold everything. The buildings, the land, and so on. Uh, I bought this Dumore grinder bracket as well that fits on a tool post. You know what that is. But in the house, they're going to bulldoze the house, and it was pretty much of a mess, but they sold everything off room by room. So I bought an entire room filled with magazines and records. I brought the magazines, you know, I like to read. So there's a whole pile of these uh, horseless carriage gazettes, it's called. A huge box of home shop machinists, so I got plenty of reading for next winter. And more of those. And this is a great magazine. I don't know if you, if you ever have heard of it, Antique Automobile. But uh, I like to page through these, and then I throw them away. But uh, you don't need to see those, and they aren't moldy either. A lot of times they're moldy, but uh, 10 bucks bought that, and the whole room was full of stuff, and I didn't take any of the other stuff. That'll just get bulldozed. It wasn't really anything of value. Records and, oh, there was a Heathkit television. Remember those big Heathkit TVs. Now look here. When I bought this box, this was hidden someplace, so I bought the box. And then when they handed it to me, they gave me this. But I don't believe that it's a Gerstner. It's some other brand, either that or Gerstner makes a second line. This is not oak. It's walnut, and it's walnut veneer. It's pretty nicely made, but it's probably not up to Gerstner standards. And I intend to give it to my wife. She helped me today uh, for jewelry. You know, women often like these boxes. So let me take this downstairs, and I'm going to go through it very slowly and thoroughly. It'll be a long video, but some of you like the details of these stereo tools. So, and it's not meant as a bragging session. Turn it right off now if you're going to criticize me for bragging and buying duplicate tools, but I paid dearly for this. All right, let's go down to the basement. Sorry if I just scolded you, but I take a, an awful lot of abuse. All right, I'm down in the basement shop now, and we will unveil it again. The finish on this is really quite nice, although it is veneer, which I just said, but there is no mirror Gerstner would have a mirror right here, and Gerstner would have its name, I think, on the buckles. Notice there's only one buckle in the middle. There's no buckles out here. There are no handles on the end, no handle on the top. It does not say made in China. It doesn't say anything other than in the very bottom, when I took out one drawer, I found the numbers W14. Now, I'm assuming that W stands for... Walnut. Pretty nicely made. Let me put it on the turntable. The deceased man was a machinist, but primarily an automotive machinist. And he rebuilt antique cars, and I don't mean cars from the 50s, I mean much older than that. And he had won many prizes. I didn't really take any footage at the auction. I did take a, a, some footage of a small lathe on my phone. I'll see if I can put that on, but I don't have a whole lot of luck doing that. But you can see what this thing looks like on all four sides. Again, nicely crafted. I'm not uh, finding anything that, that I can really criticize. 
All right, let's go through all the drawers and all the tools one at a time, slowly and methodically. Now take a guess at what I paid for this complete box, just as you see it, this whole, the whole box. I was high bidder, I didn't get it cheap, and uh, but I'm glad I bought it, at least for now. I haven't uh, developed a buyer's remorse yet. But I want to show you a clip that I made in a recent video. It possibly has not been on yet because I don't put everything on in sequence, but I am going to recreate that little sequence right now and then I'll get back to this. So here's a rec recre recreation, not recreation, or is it the same? So in a recent video I was, I don't know what I was doing, but I had a little bit of a tantrum and I said if you guys ever go to an auction and you get a chance, and I swung the camera like this, to buy or bid on a, a complete toolbox, do it. It's going to cost you $500, and I was ranting, but do it. You can't beat the price, even though it will seem like an awful lot, and your mother or your wife or whoever you're with isn't going to be happy. All right, that's the end of that. So make a comment right now with your guess, and at the very end of this video, I'm going to tell you what I paid for this, but let's go through it now. Here is a box of small hole gauges. I do not recognize that name. It is uh, Japanese. I can't believe I never heard of it, but they seem to be very high quality. I don't like the, the pouch necessarily, but these are small hole gauges that can be used all the way to the bottom. You've seen this type. It's not a ball, but it's, it's a hemisphere. But they look very, very nicely made. Have you ever seen these, or have you ever heard of that company? Here is a nice Fowler test indicator, and it goes to the tenth of a thousandth. Seems free. Has some extra mounting hardware. So that's pretty nice. In here, the head only. the usual charts. Here we have a craftsman indicator old enough to where it's made in Japan and there's the other part for it. I won't bring that out. Here's an indicator federal. Seems to work alright but that doesn't really interest me. In here again this guy did engine work. He had uh, a planer, you know, to plane off engine heads and the honing machines and you name it. A lot of big machines, but this is a Goodell Pratt inside mic with very long uh, rods so you could do you know, something like a steam engine with huge cylinders. And there's the handle. Really bigger than for anything that I do. But that's good L. Pratt, which later, I believe, became Miller's Falls. Correct me if you can. A pair of what looks like brand new steric clamps. What were those three inches? I don't know what the size is. Now here's something I really like. I've looked through this before. There's a very nice Mitutoyu dial calipers, but it's the four inch size. And I had, I'm serious when I say it, I wanted to buy a four incher because most of my work is within, you know, one or two inches. And it zeroes out nicely and it, it is used, but very, very good condition. He had an awful lot of other tools that were sold also. And I really didn't, well, I, I bid on some, but I was outbid. There were some nice Mitutoyu micrometers, too. And here's a Sterrett depth mic with all the rods. Still got oil on it. This box must have been in the heated house, because out in the other outbuildings, and there were a bunch of them, it wouldn't have been heated. All right, that's 
completes the top. Let's get to the drawers. Alright, here we have a stare at center gauge, fishtail, dime a dozen I know, and there's another one, but it's a general I believe, no, craftsman. Some radius gauges, I don't know why. There's just a couple in there not worth showing. I don't know what those are. There's a nice edge finder which I know wasn't used. He didn't have a milling machine. Possibly he bought this box like this and never did use it. I, I really don't know. There's a Sterrett thread pitch gauge and another one thread pitch gauge and some off-brand here, Union or something. Not in real good shape. Over here in this drawer we have a Sterrett, complete set of Sterrett pin vices. I was talking about those in a recent video. Well, here's a set of four. Oh, these got the, like the Bakelite or plastic handles on them. That's awesome. Those are nice. Very nice. This is exciting for me. I hope it is for you. And there's the key for the lock. A Sterrett rule, but not satin chrome. Not crazy about it. And here's a Sterrett scriber, or, or is it? I, I can't read it. Nice, though. All right, let's take a look at these two drawers. These three boxes are a little disappointing in that each one only contains one telescoping gauge rather than the way we usually find them in sets. So that's all that's in that, but I'm going to take the time now to take this drawer out and show you the quality, or maybe you think the lack of quality, but the front of the drawer is solid walnut, and it's not a veneer. Notice the joints. Now, it's not dovetail, but it's still a strong joint on all four corners. I'm not sure of the wood here on the sides. Red felt lining, and then when I flipped it over, I was a little surprised. This is sheet metal rather than masonite, and I kind of like that. It's stapled on, but yet the nice thing about this is that it allows the drawers to be just a little deeper because eighth inch masonite, of course, takes up some room. So, actually that's nice. Some of you are going to probably say, well, it's, it's junk, but I don't know. Let, let me know what you think about the quality of this piece of furniture. Let's look over here now. There's a Sterrett center punch. What in the world does he need another one of those, you're probably saying. I hope this doesn't seem boastful. Pride. You know, too proud. Okay, this is a disappointment because this is not a stereo tool. This is a four inch craftsman. The graduation sure look like stereo though, don't they? But it clearly says craftsman. So, a little bit of a pouting disappointment on that drawer. Indicator accessory, and here's another one. Older Sterrett box. The 104 speed indicator with the two tips. Plating is 100% on this. Nickel plating. Alright. That is not a Sterrett. Sampson. New Jersey. Lufkin. I do like Lufkin tools. They are not to be ridiculed. And another Lufkin. And a ball attachment for a micrometer. And I don't know why this is in here or what the purpose, but it's just a half inch rod. 
with a nice point on it. That is not a center hole, so I don't know what that's for. Oh, and this is a set of ancient drafting tools. I'm not even going to show you that. I'll stare it in the bottom drawer. And ton 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 ton. I think everybody loves these. What is that, six inch? Yeah. Now you can see these tools are used, well used, but in very good condition. Now I've never seen this model, but someone told me that it's pretty common and it's marked special. Right here it says special because this other end, whatever you call it, can be clamped on and it turns it into, turns a two inch micrometer into a one inch complete with the standard. Never seen one of those. And in here a nice set of Sterrett uh, cylinder mics, inside mics. Well that completes the toolbox tour. Now if I can load it I'm going to show you uh, some pictures or the footage that I took on my phone of a little lathe there and it was a Barnes lathe. I was going to bid on it for the accessories and it sold for only a hundred and a quarter but it was hot out and I didn't have any way to haul it and I didn't want to mess. If I could have bought it cheap enough I was going to buy it for the accessories and leave the machine lay. The Barnes lathes, the ones that I'm used to seeing, the smaller ones, were pedal powered, foot powered. But this one was modified and had a jack shaft on there so that uh, a motor could operate it. But I really had no interest in it at all. Yeah, Harold had that down at the joints in the 2 plus 2. He, he brought it down. Right here. Hope you like the toolbox tour. Let me tell you what I paid for the box now. A lot. I was outbid. I was the high bidder. And when you're the high bidder, you know what that means. I paid $525 for it. Luckily, there was no buyer's premium fee, which a lot of auctioneers are charging now, and I don't like it. Usually, I don't go to their auctions. And, and again, this is probably the last auction I ever attend. And I want to say this now. I'm going to put the camera on me. This may be my very last video ever. Although some of these are out of sequence, so you might have videos for another month or so. And I'll tell you why. This is the first week in June during this big scare of this uh, virus, COVID or something they call it. All right. <laughs> there were a hundred people there. About eight or ten were wearing masks. We were elbow to elbow, and then we went into this small shop where that lathe was. That was the very last thing. So there were, it was ten foot by ten. The auctioneer couldn't come in. He stayed outside while the bidding went on. And it got so hot in there from other people's body heat because we were that close. People were breathing down my neck, and I was breathing down other people's necks. So if, if that doesn't kill me or some other people that are there, it, it'll be a miracle. Or th this whole thing was was exaggerated so we'll see and <laughs> so if you never hear from me again that's why but I want to here's the good part 
If and when I die, I have given my family instructions and all of my video courses, there's five courses, Atlas Lathe, South Bend Lathe, Logan Lathe, Bridgeport Mill, and uh, what's the other one? Anyway, those will all be put onto YouTube and be free. They are for, uh, you have to pay for them now, of course. And that's, you know what I'm talking about because I have... Uh, uh, promotionals for that from time to time and that's kind of what allows me to do all of this uh, you know and waste money on something like this that I don't need so uh, <laughs> hope you find all of this uh, interesting or humorous now I have another question uh, to ask you I'm gonna say so long for now please like subscribe give me a thumbs up and uh, send me a hundred dollars because I'm planning on taking a, an extended trip to Hawaii with my family of ten if enough money comes in. So send that money this way, okay? See you next time. This is Mr. Peach saying so long for now.